that if you have a Quran at home, like this particular one here, which has the Arabic text, the Arabic Quran, and the meaning side by side, and a commentary tafsir, almost 2,000 pages, actually 1,920 pages. It looks small because they have used what is called fine Bible paper, expensive paper they have used, so it's compact. Previously it used to be this thick, printed in India and Pakistan, same Quran, same page for page, but because of the paper it was so thick, so we had to make it into three volumes. Give you one, same Quran, page for page, but it became as thick like that. So they had to make it in three volumes. This we reduced it by using better paper, compact size. By photostatic process, made it smaller than that other unusual size. That's all. But the page for page same. Every use of Ali's, uh, Ali's translation in the world is the same, page for page, no difference. Because everybody is stealing by photostatic process. Nobody has the time or the patience to rewrite the script, set the types of the meaning and the commentary. Today, if anybody did that, it will cost you 100 rands each. If you printed 10,000, it will still call you 100 rands each. If you did all that, nobody's got the time to do that. It's too expensive for 2,000 pages, too expensive. So everybody steals by photostatic process and has it reproduced. So you don't have to do all that, that typesetting, you know, the Arabic, the English, the commentary. It becomes easy, cheap. That makes it cheap. Then mass production makes it cheaper. So this particular one, my society, we have done almost up to now, 185,000 we have given out. 100. And at the moment we have placed an order for another 100,000 of these Qurans at a cost of about 20 rams each to print 100,000 and it's cheap. If you know about publication, 100,000 for 20 rands is cheap for 2,000 pages today. But of course, I am offering it to my Muslim brothers for 5 rands. 5 rands, believe me, no joke, no, no catch, no catch. 5 rands for 2,000 pages. There isn't another book on earth you'll ever be able to buy, not even the Bible, for that price, 2,000 pages for 5 rands. This type of a book. And he said, not bluffing you. He said, look, you write to me and I'll send it to you. No, we have them in the motor car outside. When you go outside, you can pick it up. Five runs each. And if we haven't got five runs today, next meeting, every meeting we'll have, including the Good Hope Center, it will be available. So you don't have to rush for the car and, you know, upset everything there because this afternoon at the Kippini Street Mosque, there was a stampede. People were fighting for the Qurans. I said, no, don't do that. Take it easy. If you fail, next tomorrow night, every night, wherever I lecture, the Qurans will be there, ending off with the Good Hope Center, five runs each. So in this particular translation, the big advantage is that at the end, there is a commentary. I'm sorry, there is an index. A very comprehensive index. What do you want to know about Islam? Anything you want to know, you open the index. I spoke about Surah Nisa. Maybe you don't know where Surah Nisa is. In your Quran at home, the Arabic Quran, you don't know where to find Nisa. There are 114 chapters. This is only one of them. Where will you find it? So, I said, open the index. Just like a dictionary. Nisa and the N. N-I-S-A-A. -A, Nisa. This is chapter 4. 4 is easy to find because every page is numbered. Once you found it, I say ayah number 86. Easy to find, 86. Once you found chapter 4, 86 is easy to find. You found it. Now, I want you to go home and check it out. Not only me, anybody, any learned man, <laughs> he gives you any references from the Quran, make a habit of going home and checking up. Not that you distrust the speaker. You think he was deceiving you. You think he was pulling a fast one on you. No, no, no. When you go and check it up, you are strengthening your knowledge. You see the verse, you read it, you see the translation, you say, yeah, this is what the Sheikh Imam was telling me, yes. And the commentary, further expansion, some new angles, which the Sheikh might not have had time to explain to you, 
All this, your knowledge is increasing. And once you have done that, now you can share it with other people. See, this is the secret. You must share. To get more, you must share. But just by listening, you get very, very, very elated. MashaAllah. The Shaykh delivered a beautiful lecture. What? What did he say? <laughs> it was very good. It was very nice. Beautiful. What? And maybe he touched one dozen subjects in 15 minutes. Which one are you going to remember? No. Reference. And something you like, maybe he didn't give you a reference. Go and ask him. Say, Ya Shaykh, where about is this in the Quran? So he says, this is in Surah Nisa. Where about what? He said, well, look up the fourth ruku. You know the section. He might give you that way. Or Sipara so and so. So many Siparas. <laughs> but if you can get the chapter and the verse, very easy. You want to know, what do you want to know? This book here, what do you want to know? Everything on your fingertips. You want to know about marriage in Islam. Whom you can marry, whom you can't marry. Look at the M, marriage. Everything is given to you. That you can't marry mushriks. Don't allow your daughters to marry mushriks. Of course, you can't marry your mother, your sister, your daughter, that you know. But it's all there. Even that is there. You can't marry your aunties. It's all there. But bulk of our people, they don't know. They're getting caught out. My daughters, meaning the Indian Muslims' daughters in Natal and the Transvaal, they're running away with the Mushriks. See, because Indian to Indian. We are the same nation. Allah says, Wala tankehul mushrikati hatta yu minna. And do not marry Mushrik women until they believe. But who knows the Quran? We don't know. Here I find that our Muslim girls, Malay girls, are marrying Mushriks. They don't know. The other guy is an Indian. I'm an Indian. He said, Didat is an Indian. He said, yes. Mr. Muhammad is an Indian. He said, yes. That Mr. Parker is an Indian. He said, yes. They are Indian Muslims. They are all Muslims. Yes. But the other guy comes on sing. She doesn't know the difference between sing and song. She marries the fellow. She's an Indian. It's another Indian. No. She must know. Allah tells you, don't marry Mushriks until they are converted. And so on. Marriage. You know about divorce. And the D, you find divorce. There is a chapter in the Quran, Quran called Surah Talaq. Whole chapter deals with the subject. Allah Bari Ta'ala, He took the trouble to explain to us in detail that if it must come to that, how to proceed, how to do the job. Don't do it the way your fathers have been doing. My fathers. When they get angry, what they do? They say, Talaq, Talaq, Talaq. Finish. Do Malays also do that? Do they? I don't know. Look, I haven't had a chance to ask anyone. Do the Malays also, when they get angry with the wife, I'm going to get rid of her, what do they say? Do they do that? Talaq, talaq, talaq. Do they do that? I hope not. But the Indian Muslims, my people, we do that. But that's what we heard. You want to get rid of your wife? It's just easier than eating peanuts. Peanuts you have to shell. This you don't have to shell even. Just say, talaq, talaq, talaq. Then they regret. This woman needs to work so hard. Look after your children. He did so many things for you for nothing. You can't even hire an African woman to do that for you. So you want to bring her back. So they go to the, our Molwis, what you call chefs. Our Maulanas. No, no, our Imams and our, our chefs. We call them Molwis and Maulanas. You go to them. He said, look, man, I made a mistake. What to do now? I want her back. He said, look, show you an easy way out. You make that wife of yours ex-wife, to marry some old man, like did that. <laughs> but there's a condition. There's a condition attached. That that wife of yours and did must go into a place where they can have sex. Otherwise, it's incomplete. You must go have that chance. And then subsequently, if did wants to divorce, and if the woman wants a divorce, and he divorces her, and she waits for another, how many days, 40 days? Three months? Then he says, now nah, he can remarry you. What is it? Filthy, dirty thing. You made a mistake. And now 